What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, Lady, I'm carrying a baby. How do you get that I work here? Hi, first time posting to this group, but I have a funny story to tell. I'm a new mom and this story involves me, my baby, and this old lady questioning me. So I live in Canada where I get one year maternity leave. Wow, yay Canada. So a few weeks ago, I went to meet my husband at his work where this story takes place. My husband is an assistant manager, which is a key detail to this story. I'm carrying my son in a chest carrier. This was the first time customers were allowed in the store and I'm walking around looking at product. I'm also looking to some of my husband's staff, one of them being my child's godparent, also my god sister. I see this lady walking around with a bit of an attitude, but I chose to ignore her. After all, she is not my problem as I don't work here. Clearly, even if I did, the fact that my child is strapped to my chest means here in Canada I don't work here for at least one year so lady is acting like she is in a mood and giving a complete B face to anyone who can see exchange goes like this here's the cast moody patron me significant other god sister store manager excuse me where the hell are all your annuals well they usually are around here but I don't know maybe they're sold out what the hell do you mean sold out this is a garden center correct yes but things do sell out if they aren't here then i don't know what to tell you why are you guys sold out this is ridiculous i want to speak to your manager well ma'am i'm sorry i don't know what to tell you they don't seem to have them where they usually are God sister comes over as she is done for the day to see me and her godchild. I turn to speak to her as she is more of a priority over moody patron, still in uniform but carrying all her stuff to go home with. Hey, how is baby? Great. He's sleeping right now, but overall doing really well. How are you? I'm good. Just tired. It was a long day. Excited to go home and chill. That's good. Do you need a ride? We can drive you home so you can spend time with baby. Yeah, actually I do. That would be awesome. Moody patron is starting to get red in the face, and I can tell she wants to say something, but holds off. Babe, you finding everything okay? Do you want to go into the garden farm? pharmacy with baby i'm sure the fan up there for you can get nice and cool sure babe but this lady wants to speak to a manager i point to the lady oh okay thanks babe he turns to moody patron and says how can i help you are you kidding me you helped her first over me and she is your spouse this is nuts. I demand to speak to a manager. Well, ma'am, I'm a manager, and I was just telling my wife that I had space for her to go sit with our baby to cool off until I'm done with work. But how can I help you? I stay close nearby just to see what happens. Seriously? You have your spouse working here? What type of business is this? Wow, this place is a joke that you hire people like her just to create favoritism. Is this whole place run by you and your damn family? What is wrong with this place? Me and God sister are standing off to the side listening, and I'm feisty, so I eventually speak up. Well, ma'am, I never said I worked here, and I was being nice to you by saying usually this is where you would find this stuff first off. Second, you see that I'm carrying my child in a carrier. Considering in Canada where we can take a year to a year and a half off for maternity leave, how do you get the idea I'm working here? Even if I was working here, I would be on leave. Third, as you can see, everyone is wearing different colored uniforms with the company logo. Do you see me wearing one? No. So how do you get the idea that I work here? Use some common sense. And since I am married to one of the managers here, clearly to not make my husband look bad, I was being polite and giving you the best answer I could when I could have easily said to you, I don't work here, so why don't you go find someone who does work here? 
I don't have to help anyone, and you coming up to me and being rude despite us being in a pandemic, when we should all treat people kindly, shows what type of person you are. Also, please stop being rude to my husband, or unlike him, I can tell you to shop elsewhere with your crappy attitude. But I'm gonna tell ya, good luck elsewhere, they too will most likely be sold out, and not give any better customer service as this place does. I turn to my god sister who is dying over there and give her a huge high five. Significant other is gobsmacked, but I can tell is processing. Store manager shows up to say goodnight as well and to see baby for the first time. Moody patron comes up to us and is not distancing now and recognizes store manager and starts to complain about what I just said. Excuse me? Imagine a long drawn out tone. You're the store manager, correct? I want to file a complaint about this lady right here. Excuse what? What type of complaint? I'm so confused. What's going on here? Store manager knows me to be anything but rude. So he listens and then he turns to her and says, Well, ma'am, I can't take a complaint about a fellow customer. Also, I have had the privilege to work with this lady and she is amazing. Also, you need to back up and give us space as we are still in a pandemic and you could be exposing the baby to something. Finally, if she tried to help you the way you said she did, that's pretty nice of her since she doesn't have to. Have a good night as the store is now closed. He walks off and Moody Patron is now screaming about how bad this place is run and favoritism is extremely big here and that she is going to social media to complain amongst other things that she finds wrong. I just died of laughter and everyone else who was nearby was shocked. As she was leaving, I I just waved bye. So worth it. Sorry for the long post. A year and a half of maternity leave? That is crazy. I'm pretty sure it's eight weeks here in America. Um, ladies in the comments below who have had maternity leave, would a year be better than eight weeks for you personally? Uh, or do you think that's just too much? Because I know for a fact kids do not stop being a crap ton of work until they're like, what, school age? But even then, that's, you still got a lot to worry about. This story's called, I Choose to Blame It on the Virus Panic. This happened to my neighbor and best friend and boss, or BFF, and me today. A little background important to the story. We're both redheaded women. Both work for the same law enforcement department. I generally work nights, she generally works days. We both were told to take today off after working three 36 hour shifts with only a few hours of sleep between because of dealing with panic from a certain virus that aside from a couple of travelers hasn't hit our area yet. And since we both needed stuff, BFF and I grabbed BFF's two offspring, offspring one and offspring two, and had Head for a certain store that is a local chain that is something like a slim down Walmart. The uniform of their employees is black slacks, white polo, and an apron that varies by department. BFF is dressed in flats, casual pants, and a white button down over a cami and her vest. I'm in blue jeans, knee high boots, and a department t shirt over my vest. In other words, nothing like the store's uniform. Plus, we have, you know, belts, white handcuffs, guns, and holsters. We're in the store for about half an hour. I'm pushing one cart, Offspring 1 is pushing the other, while BFF is holding Offspring 2 in one arm and pulling things off the shelf with the other. Suddenly, we hear a loud crash and a scream in the next aisle. BFF passes Offspring 2 off to me, telling me to watch her, and heads over to the next aisle. She barely makes it around the corner when I hear her call for me. I set Offspring 2 down, tell her to wait with Offspring 1, and come around the corner. Here I see it. One young woman, her head slightly bleeding, trying to free herself from the grasp of a crazy blonde lady, probably roughly in her late 30s to late 40s, while a man and a few kids look on. 
crazy lady looks up at BFF and immediately says, Oh good, are you the manager of this crappy store? This lazy bimbo refuses to help me. I want her fired. She then jerks the young woman so hard that the woman runs into the shelves, cutting herself a second time. Ma'am, let her go. BFF states flatly, I don't think she works here. What do you mean you don't think she works here? Don't you know your own employees? What kind of crappy dumbass freaking manager are you? BFF looks at me, I look at BFF, then look back at crazy lady giving her my most wicked smile. I'd say she knows her employees pretty well, I remarked. However, that lady doesn't work for this store. She's not wearing the uniform. Tell your freaking security grunt to be silent, crazy lady spouts off. Ah, uh, mama? One of the kids urgently starts. I don't think she's security. Shut up, Marco. Not real name. Can't you see mama's talking to the manager? Ma'am, I'm not the manager. BFF says, pointing to the store manager who is now hurrying over. He is. Now let go of the girl. I won't ask again. She starts reaching for her handcuffs. Freaking lying, Kuda. You white folk bimbos are all the same. Racist and sticking up for each other. Rather ironic considering that crazy lady was paler than I am. And that's saying something. At that moment, Offspring 2 came running around the corner. Hey, is it okay if I... Crazy lady finally let go of the terrified and injured girl and then grabbed Offspring 2, flinging her halfway down the aisle. Stupid brat, wait your turn, you stupid little wham! Crazy Lady stopped talking as she ricocheted off the shelves. Don't you ever touch my daughter again, BFF told her as she tried to handcuff Crazy Lady. At this point, the man that had been standing with the kids tries to grab onto BFF and winds up taking a knee to the groin for his trouble. Crazy Lady takes advantage of the moment, pushes BFF off, grabs a jar off the shelf to swing towards BFF's head, and freezes as she realizes I I've drawn my weapon. Her eyes go wide. I'll call corporate and have you fired for this, she hissed. I guess crazy lady didn't see anything wrong with having a weapon herself and trying to use it, but somehow someone else with a weapon stopping her from potentially killing someone else is a bad thing. Mama! The little boy screamed. I've been trying to tell you, they don't work here. The lady is police, look at her shirt. She looked down at my shirt, and she definitely got that look people get when they realize they are in serious trouble. Wish I could say the fight left her then. Instead, as she was Mirandized, she kept insisting that she had done nothing wrong and that she was being entrapped by the police. After Crazy Lady and the man that tried to grab BFF were cuffed, given their rights, and sat on the floor, the manager helped me watch over the two while BFF went and checked on Offspring 2 while we waited on someone actually on duty for medics to arrive. Entire thing took maybe five minutes from the time we heard the crash until the end. Another ten for coworkers and medics to arrive. The young woman that was first assaulted had to go to the hospital to be checked out. Poor girl was really scared she was going to catch something at the hospital. Offspring 2 had her arm broken and also had to go to the hospital. The man and his kids turned out to be her boyfriend and their children. Crazy lady and boyfriend are now in jail for the foreseeable future since courts are closed. Crazy lady's kids are going to social services. Boyfriend was still in the process of applying for his green card. Now he probably can't get it and may be facing deportation at the end of all this. Since the injured girl, BFF and I couldn't finish our shopping. The manager took our lists and promised everything would be delivered to our houses tomorrow. Before anyone asks, we are not required to wear our vests off duty, but most of us do. As for why we have our guns and badges while shopping with kids, in our department, certain ranks are 
are required to carry weapons, badges, and cuffs while off duty. Oh, and this whole thing apparently started because the store was out of toilet paper. And Crazy Lady decided the girl stocking up on pickles must be an employee. Edit 2. Offspring 2 had her follow up with an orthopedic today who squeezed her in this morning. She has to have an old school plaster cast in black and hot pink. She's already asked my help in decorating it with pirate and gear themed stickers and has video Skyped some of her friends and cousins to show it off. Her stories about her epic battle keep growing with every telling. I think she's gonna be just fine. Also, for those asking, groceries were delivered early this morning. Uh, I love how casual they are about the girl's arm being broken. Like, what? Your your daughter gets flung down an aisle with her arm freaking broken, so obviously the, the impact was something to see. And the reaction was, don't you dare touch my daughter again. <laughs> I guess we should be happy they kept their cool, but that's just a little weird, man. This story's called, Come Pick Me Up! I'm not a taxi, miss. So, just a short story. Just happens to me right now. I'm self-employed, although I do on occasion work on a car wash side. But that's just voluntary work to help out my dad. And today, I'm working for myself, just on my way to my first job when I get a phone call. A private number. Not unusual for me, I do work for a lot of businesses, so naturally I answer the phone and the conversation goes exactly like this. Hello? It's A, B, C, D, E, F. I was wondering where you are. Uh, Abacadef? I'm sorry, I don't work for you or your company. There's a long pause before a siren pitched scream comes down the line. You were meant to be here, now we're going to pick me up and take me to work. Where the heck are you? I would screech, but I don't want to do that right now. I cleared my throat. <coughs> Ma'am, I don't know you. Why would I pick you up and take you- She cuts me off. Of course you don't know me, I'm your taxi driver now, get over to my address. One, two, three, made up streety, get me to work, I'm already late because of you! Miss, I'm sorry, but I'm not a taxi driver and I've no idea where that street even is. I don't even know if it's in the same city as me. She sighs, the longest sigh you could possibly imagine. Just pick me up. She hangs up. About five minutes pass and I'm still wondering what the hell just happened when I get a text message. I'm sorry about my wife yelling at you. She dialed the wrong number off by one digit. Sorry, pal. Edit. I've since received another call from the woman. I assume her husband made her call and apologize, and well, she did. She also went into detail as to why she was so angry. She had called and scheduled a taxi on Friday to pick her up on Monday. The taxi company gave her a number of the driver that was supposed to be picking her up, and he asked actually quit that same Friday, apparently just a few hours later. She told me over the phone she obviously didn't know this and her new taxi driver picked her up and explained it all to her. She was actually kind of nice and understood she was in the wrong this morning, just the stress of having booked a taxi that then doesn't turn up and apparently didn't have any coffee, so she was miserable. Oh, and for those wondering, it turns out from where I live and where she lives, well, it's a four hour drive distance, so I don't think I'd have gotten there in time anyway. Well, that's a, that's a good little story with a cute little wholesome ending there. Good to see that she uh, called and apologized and realized what she did wrong. That's honestly all I ever need. If you piss me off, and honestly, if it's a little thing, and if I figure that it came from a place of just you disrespecting me or something, I have a hard time letting it go until someone's like, yeah, I realized that was probably messed up. Sorry. And then it's all good. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.